Hi guys, it's Jess from Honest Fiction and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing the end of the year book tag. Alright guys, so I did this tag last year and I figured it's a great way to sum up my end of the year reading plans. So I'm going to be talking about new releases that haven't come out yet, potential new favorites, books that I'm still kind of in the middle of reading or might have DNF'd and plan on picking back up, and also the changes that have happened throughout the year and some plans for 2024. So this actually is a pretty short tag. There aren't a lot of questions, so this should be a pretty quick video. And if you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram and Goodreads, both linked down below. With all that out of the way, let's get into the tag. The first question is, are there any books you put down that you still need to finish? So typically with this question, I always don't have an answer because it's very rare for me to DNF a book and then plan on eventually picking it back up. Typically when I DNF a book, that book is DNF'd. That book did not work for me and I have no interest in picking it back up. However, this year was the year of DNFs. I was DNFing left and right, which I actually think helped my reading a lot, but there are two books that I think I might have DNFed too quickly. So first up is Divine Rivals, and I believe this is by Rebecca Ross, and this is a kind of like historical fiction meets fantasy romance, and I tried reading this when it first came out and I ended up DNFing after a chapter, I think like 12 or 13, it just felt very, very YA to me. And also I just wasn't really invested in the characters or the story. However, since DNFing it, this book has gained so much popularity and I feel like everyone is absolutely loving it. So I do wanna give this book a second chance. So that is another book I think I will definitely be reading or trying to finish before the end of the year. Now, the other book that I DNFed was actually Blood Mercy. And I forget the name of this author. I think it's Veronica Roth. Um, and I just, the writing style of this book is very, very dense. Um, at the time I was trying to read this, it was over the summer. I just, I could not invest the amount of time necessary to complete this book. It's rather long. And this author really, really loves details. So I have had friends that have ended up finishing this book and really, really enjoyed it. So I do think I will like it. I'm pretty sure it's actually a vampire fantasy romance. And I love a good like enemies to lovers vampire story. It was just, the book was so long and the writing was just very, very flowery. And I just was not in the mood for it. But I think if I read it in the winter, when I have more time, I will really, really enjoy it. And the next question is, are there any autumnal books you can recommend to transition into the end of the year? So unfortunately, I feel like at this time of year, I've already like transitioned out of autumnal and we are straight into winter. So I typically read a lot more like dense, heavy fantasy in the winter, just because I have a little bit more time and I really like reading like fantasy romance and romanticy around this time. Also, I've already started reading like holiday rom-coms and yeah, so we're already, we're in the winter months. So there are two books that I really wanna read that definitely have that like winter vibe. So first one is The Witch Collector and I've had this book on my TBR for what feels like ever. <laughs> So the audiobook was finally released, but this book is following a girl that lives in this village where every few years or so, a witch collector comes and takes a woman to this evil king and they are never seen again. So a few years prior to the start of this book, our main character's sister was one of these women taken and she is out for revenge. And I heard this has like a very like wintry sort of backdrop. So it's like perfect to read this time of year. So I'm very excited to read that. I'll probably be reading that at the end of December, beginning of January. And then another book that I really wanna read is the Tis the Season for Revenge, which is like a holiday rom-com that I feel like everyone was talking about last year. However, there wasn't an audiobook out yet, so I didn't get a chance to read it, but it sounds so, so good. And the audiobook finally came out, so I will definitely be picking that up super early in December, um, if not at the very end of this month, because I'm just so excited to see if that book is worth all of the hype. And the next question is, are there any new releases you are still waiting for that are gonna release at the end of this year? Yes. So at the time of filming this, a lot of fantasy books had just released that I was so excited for. So A Fire in the Flesh and Iron Flame being like the top two. So I read Iron Flame, I still need to read A Fire in the Flesh, but Gold by Raven Kennedy has not released yet and I need that book. I need that book right now. So we just found out that that book is actually not gonna be the final book in the Plated Prisoner series, and there's gonna be at least one more after it, which makes a lot of sense because the ending of, I think it's Gleam, the ending of the last book that was released 
ended on such an epic cliffhanger and I just, I need to know what's gonna happen. So I'm so excited for Gold to finally come out and that is probably the book I am most looking forward to. I'm also really looking forward to Crescent City 3, but I'm pretty sure that doesn't come out till January. So technically not this year, but yeah, Gold is like the number one book I am so excited to read. Next up is what are three books that you wanna read before the end of the year? There are so many more than three. I'm gonna try to keep this under 10 but I definitely wanna read The Fire in the Flesh by Jennifer L. Armitrout, which I already talked about, which is the third book in the prequel series, two from Blood and Ash. I also wanna read Hurricane Wars, which is a romanticy book, and it was actually one of the options for Goodreads Choice Awards uh, top romanticy books of the year, and I really know nothing about it, but I realized that I owned a copy because it was also a fairy loot pick. So I wanna give that a try and see if it's good, but only because there are a few books um, in that Goodreads Choice Awards that I didn't even know. Like, I did not recognize the titles, and I feel like I read a lot of fantasy romance, so I wanna try out some of those books and uh, see why they're on the list, besides the fact they have a lot of reviews. So that is another one. I also wanna read Anastasia by Sophie Lark, only because I keep putting that book off and I know I'm gonna love it. It's just, it is so long, and I just, I don't ever feel like I have enough time to read it, but I definitely wanna read that before the end of the year. Also, The Right Move by Liz Tom Ford, which is a sports romance that everyone seemed to be loving, and the audiobook finally dropped. So I definitely wanna give that a try. Um, the Witch Collector, which I already talked about, and then Out on a Limb by Helen Bottom Carter, I think, or Young, one of those two. That is a contemporary romance that I know a few of my friends really, really enjoyed, so I really wanna try to read that. And then Lucia Franco just released a new book. I totally forget the title, but I love everything that woman writes, so I will 100% be reading that before the end of the year. So yeah, those are some of them, but there are so, so many more, and I'll definitely be posting my December TBR um, shortly after this video just for like a full list of all the books I need to read. And the next question is, is there a book you think will shock you and becoming new favorite of the year? And the answer to that is probably not. So I already know what my top book of the year is, and it's Manacled by Senlin Yu. So at, there was a while there, I thought it might be Love in a Time of a Zombie Apocalypse, which is also Draco and Hermione fanfic. However, I Manacled, I just don't see any other book eliciting the emotions that Manacled did. That book is so dark and so emotional and so beautiful in so many ways. And there are certain quotes from that book that still will have me sobbing. So yeah, that is definitely gonna be the top book of the year. Also, Binding and Keeping 13 were just devastating in the best possible way. I haven't had a book make me feel those type of emotions or elicit those emotions in a very, very long time. So yeah, I just, I can't see any book I pick up really competing with either of those, but you never know, it could happen. So I'm gonna say, Probably not. There's a very tiny, tiny chance, but like most likely no. I, I know my top books of the year and I had an amazing reading year and I'm so thankful for that. And the next question is, have you started making plans for next year? And the answer is yes, I have. So I'm gonna be slightly cryptic, but I do have plans and I've been working on a couple projects that are taking so much longer than I originally anticipated. However, I will be announcing one of them towards the end of the year. I'm very excited slash nervous about it. Um, so yeah, th and there's also books I've already had my eye on that I wanna read in 2024, as well as new releases. I do have a video coming out where I talk about all my anticipated releases and kind of my reading plans for 2024. But yeah, I've already, I've already started kind of figuring things out, things I wanna change regarding my channel, and I am very much looking forward to 2024. Hopefully, it will be amazing. I feel like every year I've been on booktube, it's just gotten better and better. So yes, I am so excited for 2024. And the last and probably most chatty question is, have there been any changes in 2023? So that is a resounding yes. Um, the beginning of 2023 till now looks drastically different. Probably not so on your end, but definitely on my end. Um, I, in the beginning of this year, hadn't done any live shows and I have now done a ton, possibly too many. I think I'm gonna cut back a little bit on live shows. And also I feel like I've grown a lot as a content creator. I've really changed and learned different ways of editing. I'm using different programs. Also, if you notice my thumbnails have progressively kind of shifted to a different format. And honestly, I like this new format so much better. I'm able to kind of express myself more creatively. And that has all kind of slowly changed over this year. I feel like I've learned a lot in terms of just editing and like how I structure videos. And also behind the scenes, I have made some absolutely beautiful friendships. Um, I was already friends with Isa from Fun Fantasy Books prior to this year. However, 
She has become one of my best friends on the entire planet. I don't know what I would do without her. So thank you, Isa. You are just, I love you so much. Um, also, Hannah from the channel Hannah Blackwell. I talk to her almost daily, and she has just been an amazing friend and an amazing support system. So thank you. I'm so happy I got to meet Hannah in person. That was like one of my favorite like booktube memories of this year. So yeah, also prioritizing my mental health. Um, I feel like over the last two months in particular, I've really had to find a balance between booktube, bookstagram, and my social life and just my mental health was suffering. I also have a full-time job that I have to uh, be present for and really that takes a lot of my attention. So all of that I feel like is kind of like more behind the scenes stuff that you guys don't really see, but I've been dealing with over 2023 and I feel, I feel happy at the end of this year. I feel like I've really come a long way and I'm proud of what I've put out this year and I'm so happy for the amazing friendships I've made. Also just via DM on Instagram. It is so exciting now that like I'll randomly get DMs about like the Philadelphia Eagles or like things that not always related to books. I will talk about books all day long. Like, please, if you want to DM me about books, go for it. But also just like learning things about people has been really, really really fun and just like helps my heart. So thank you guys so, so much. Uh, 2023 has been a very intense year, but also a very rewarding year in a lot of ways. So thank you guys. I just, I love this community and you guys are the best. All right, guys, that is it for my end of the year book tag. If you are seeing this video and you are considering doing this tag, consider yourself officially tagged. And I said this already, I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye.